Director and American Action Forum President, he's with us from Washington. Great to have you back. So even Thanks, if the sir. ministers agree to have a deal this week, we still have the House and the Senate the need to approve it. So how <laughs> crucial is it that they get something done this week? Uh, the clock is, is ticking and it's really getting very tight. Uh, given the requirement for the Congress to ratify it and the timelines involved in that, uh, notice to the Congress, reports by the International Trade Commission, I, I think most people think they really have to get this done in the next week or they're just not going to have enough clock to be able to get it done in 2018. Lots of points of contention, though. Automobiles still looming large. Demand for a 40% of the value of cars to be made by workers earning at least $16 an hour. Mexico will not be happy about this. Uh, Mexico is not happy about the auto demands. They haven't been happy about them from the very beginning. And uh, that's not the only contentious issue. There are also the dispute settlement procedures in NAFTA, which were originally American provisions, but which U.S. Trade Rep uh, Lighthizer now views as a subsidy to f uh, U.S. factories uh, put into Mexico. So he's opposed to those. Uh, th these are all extremely important issues, very contentious. And um, th as I said before, there's not a lot of time. So this has dragged down quite a while. I mean, you remember that originally we were told it was going to all be wrapped up last year, and it's dragged on. Yeah. We've got the Chinese situation that is dragging on. For that matter, we've got the issues with steel and aluminum dragging on. At what point does this really become a problem for growth, for the economy, for businesses who just are faced with uncertainty? They don't know where it's going to end up. Well, the President Trump has actually said on occasion that uh, as long as the negotiations drag on, no one will build a factory in Mexico. So he seems pleased with that prospect. That's, that's at odds with his other attempts in the regulatory tax areas to get the U.S. economy moving uh, more rapidly. So uh, I, I concur with what, the way you framed it. I mean, this is a problem in general. Uh, the steel and aluminum tariffs have no real benefit in my view. They are just a problem uh, for the U.S. NAFTA needs to get settled. And the end game of the Chinese negotiations remains unclear to everyone. We were, if you were back at CBO scoring this thing, could you, could you put a rough score on it? I mean, do we take a tenth away from GDP growth? Do we take two tenths away if this drags on for another year or so? I think if you look at the NAFTA agreement, uh, most people would agree that that had a modest effect on U.S. economic growth, but an enormous impact on our security on the southern border and the stability of a democratic ally. I, I don't know how you score the latter, but uh, the former, you know, every tenth of a percentage point in this environment is extremely important, and you don't want to be, you know, sort of carelessly tossing them away. Let's uh, turn now to the U.S. budget and spending because we've just heard reports from Politico that the White House plans to ask for a $15 billion cut to that recently passed $1.3 trillion government spending bill. Will we even see a rescission process happen given that if you let 45 working days pass and Congress doesn't really do anything about it, then there goes the rescission package? Well, as I understand the state of play, they've, they've moved away from the recent omnibus, which was a, a brokered political deal between Republicans and Democrats on the Hill, and they don't want to upset that, and instead have turned to rescission of more traditional kinds of funds, unobligated balances that are sitting there from the Obama-era stimulus, from Superstorm Sandy, from some uh, Department of Energy loan programs. That's the traditional use of a rescission, some money which is not being used effectively and won't be used, uh, getting uh, swept up and put back to the Congress. But uh, in the big picture, I, I think they can get this done, but $15 billion doesn't solve the fundamental problems in the U.S. budget. How would it, though, hurt or, or help the little bipartisan goodwill that's left in Congress? I think if they were to use the rescission to go right back at the omnibus that just passed, it would be an enormous damage to the credibility of Republicans and Democrats on the Hill. They, they cut a deal, and to renege on it that quickly would be, be quite bad. I believe that they've convinced the White House of this. So they're going to go back and, and essentially say, hey, this is money that President Obama wanted to spend. We can all agree that it's not probably good spending, and they'll, they'll have rescission focused on those kinds of items. Doug, Doug, it's pretty clear at this point that politics don't seem likely to address the budget problem. At what point does the bond market address it for us? Because it looks like both Democrats and Republicans are not willing to make the tough decisions. Uh, I don't know is the honest answer. Uh, I really don't want to find out. Uh, I think to let the U.S. budget continue on its current trajectory, which is unsustainable and dangerous, uh, invites the bond market to step in and say, all right, it's our turn. 
that's bad for growth. It makes the budget problem worth, worse when interest rates go up. And it means you have to solve it in a crisis. And uh, solving it in a crisis is never a good way to do things. So uh, we should all hope that Congress and the administration decide to get ahead of this and proactively take on the rapid growth in sp spending that is underlying the long-term budget problem. Well, we, we're auctioning $73 billion with the Treasury uh, securities this week. That's $7 billion more than the comparable period last year. Uh, are you yeah. surprised at the extent to which the market is willing to absorb this increased issuance? Uh, I haven't been too surprised in the near term. Uh, for quite some time now, the U.S. has had uh, a noticeable long-term budget problem, and, and, and over that same period, we have been the place where there was a flight to safety during financial uh, uh, turmoil around the globe. So the market's still convinced that the U.S. will take on this problem. What we really never want to have happen is for the market to lose that confidence. And so steps in the right direction uh, are, are important in that regard. As you say, we don't want to find out the answer to that question. Okay, Doug, thanks right. so much for your time. That's Douglas Holtz Eakin. He's the former CBO director and American Action Forum president. Coming up, active